Hello everyone and uh, welcome to KibriCon 2024 and uh, this is Bhupesh here who is uh, working as a senior software engineer in, uh, for the observability team in Autodesk and today I'm going to present my presentation with the title as uh, quality increases with the logs for enhanced observability and yeah let's get started with it. So yeah this is a basic info about myself and the company I work. This slide is going to say about uh, what does Autodesk do and it's something which we we build products for people to make something from the scratch in various sectors of the industry right from your architecture to uh, anything with respect to media, entertainment and constructions. So this is something which we do on a day to day basis and this is for some people who would like to have a visual graph of what we do so we can see people here building out uh, plans for the construction, having some designs being built out for manufacturing side and cars and parts and of course 3D images and uh, animations over here. So yeah, let's get on with our agenda for today. So we'll start with a uh, introduction, like what, what what's the purpose and what's the total uh, purpose of this presentation and the challenge it's dealing with, how come we can uh, and the solution as well as the use case where we showcase how uh, real world example is being used uh, to solve a business problem which we have and sh share some of our best practices and other useful things so that uh, pe uh, people in the industry can benefit out of this. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's get started so with this saying that says collecting data alone is not something which is important. So as from my experience, right, right now within the uh, IT ecosystem, more observability has been now evolved into three broader tracks which is logs traces and metrics and uh, from uh, my own uh, interactions with the fellow uh, people here i feel uh, right now observability is going into a direction where it's something where it is being done as part of a sign off and something like uh, people want to have the products created and released and being used widely but then observability comes in as just as a checkpoint but then teams are not evolving into how to use observability and have combine all these three tracks together and uh, draw insights and make the best out of it so that's something which uh, is currently happening in across the institutions so that's something which we need to try to address it and uh, i think as a result of that we have a challenge here where we are unable to even uh, unify all the telemetry data for any particular applications or request right? So as the companies are growing, we have various multi-services across, divided across the organizations and each multi -serv each service is being owned by a different team and they have their own tech stack and uh, it's in a distributed services, You, it's very tough to unify all the telemetry data for any particular request, right? So, as, uh, as a bigger organization and enterprise, your request is not going to be served or any 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 application or any product is not going to be served or serviced by one particular microservice, right? So it's going to flow through various services and then uh, when all these teams are going to work in silos and have their own logging format and then when you want to identify issue or where is the bottleneck at uh, from the top level, you might find it difficult to traverse across all these things. So. I think that's one of the challenge which we are primarily facing as companies grow and uh, as, as our uh, licenses increase and our, our logging volume increases and the, as, as data grows when uh, we try to scale our companies to higher heights. So that's something which uh, we need to have a unique tracker across all these systems from where which are working independently. I think to have that manually, it's something which will take a lot of uh, manual effort and as well as your manpower to have that ac across all the uh, systems. So that's something which uh, is really time consuming as well. So and I even right. so even once you start building out this manually and then once you set it up, then let's say uh, in two years or three years, you have a new framework and new logging library, which is coming and it uses a totally different format. And then you have to again keep it updated. So there is no uh, one one stop all pro process for this. So that's the challenge which we are trying to address here and we need to have a mechanism where we can correlate all of our data into one single place and we have many tools in the market which is having this facilities but then for the people uh, who can't afford or who can't have it all in one tool so let's say people use uh, 
open telemetry for traces they use logs for splunk, splunk for logs and then they have metrics in the dynatrace so how, how come you going to combine all these three different uh, tracks into one so that, that's where the problem raises so this is something which we need to uh, address and uh, as a result of these challenges right so we have all the observability data into separate uh, bottles not being <laughs> used together so we we it, it, it does cause a lot of uh, uh, problems where your data is going to be in silos and you might not make complete sense of it so you might not know at uh, you might know there's a single point of failure but then you might know where it's failing but then what's the cause whether it's downstream or upstream where this is happening on the inside support what's going to stop uh, what's going to solve your issue over here so that's something which uh, would be lacking because of the challenge and then once when th these things happen it's going to take some time to get it resolved so this will cause of course your extended downtime for your applications and services and which will in turn affect your revenues and your business impact for your customers and the world as well as uh, talking about scalability issues right so each and every organizations have their own growth targets and they want to, to grow in their own way own pace and when organizations grow we need to have the scaling power to scale from uh, uh, 1 billion to a 5 billion company where your logging volume is also going to increase in more than 5x not even 5x right so th these are the some of the challenges uh, and its impacts listed down here so yeah, I mean, uh, that's when we want we are trying to provide a solution where we can't have all these systems and services working on an independent basis or a separate basis where this has to be addressable. So we need to have something or a framework in middle which is going to correlate and combine and of all these tracks into one. So that's when um, we are trying to have a, a solution. So. And going on with the impact, right? So if you if you're going to see, we might have uh, lot mean MTTR is going to increase the the number of times and the duration where you try to work on complete the, uh, the troubleshooting and going to resolve this ticket using uh, by comparing each of these uh, data in their own uh, uh, platforms and in their own uh, format, understanding and drawing insight that's going to take some time and then. When you're trying to do a manual correlation of doing this manually, I think that that's going to spend some more uh, money on your money and effort on your manual part. And yeah, I mean, so, like I mentioned, this is going to be an impact on your uptime as well as an application. So yeah, let's dive into the outcome and how, how are we going to fix this? So the solution which we are talking about here is uh, integrating logs and traces. So traces are something which you use to monitor your applications and the data captured may or may not contain the same as what you have in your log data but then uh, it's going to give you a, a deep insight of how your services is behaving or interacting with the various other uh, services downstream or upstream however your log data is going to be something which you're capturing from your uh, hosts or the resources where the application is running and uh, uh, let's say we don't uh, we don't have this in, uh, correlation or this interaction between where you host your services and where you host your uh, application. So we need uh, integrating the traces and the logs to have an, a deep understanding of wh what's really happening in a particular request. So using both traces with logs can help you understand an issue from both an application point of view as well as a hosting resource point of view. We may have a lo lot of, uh, so tracing has a lot of uh, patterns and filters where you might not be able to integrate it with all the events which you wanted to be traversed uh, uh, in injected into the trace. So that's where the, uh, the, this integration is going to be valuable. And uh, uh, it, it's going to clearly improve uh, your visibility into your data with your respect to your uh, in, in, uh, information on what, what's really happening uh, between teams and across the services. So this is going to help you in a quick root cause identification and also by uh, having a good uh, service dependency mapping with respect to uh, what all services uh, your your services currently or your team which you the services which you own is interacting so that's going to give you a, a deep insight and in when you know the point of contact of where the failure is happening and then you will be able to know which team or his upstream was the first point of contact and which team is done the downstream is going to be the receiving end of the my request so that's going to be really helpful in your uh, troubleshooting and it makes your the uh, me, uh, meantime to resolve in a much faster way and uh, metrics and tracking is something where we uh, we can track and uh, uh, 
so uh, trace is going to give you a stats on how much duration of each uh, a span is uh, uh, by being generated and how much time it takes at each uh, module level so that's going to give you an, a quick insight of what, which endpoint and where the this latencies and where there's performance issues is across the system so this is something which is going to be helpful and uh, integrating all this into uh, with the logs and other informations and exceptions which you get from the logs that's going to be really valuable once you are we able to correlate and into one particular request so this is a basic overall view of uh, how how we want to build uh, uh, how we have built a unified system a view of the system we are here where we have one particular uh, set of uh, application here mentioned over this side where uh, we have instrumented applications to create hotel traces as well as the lambda on the application layer there is also having uh, uh, logging libraries which is going to export logs into Splunk. So we have this particular way but uh, we do not know whether these are all going to create value on their own. So that's where we have Kribble Stream in place. So we enable Kribble Stream uh, with, to collect uh, water traces from its sources and uh, inject into Splunk. At the same time we also collect our logs from uh, all the application side and inject into Splunk. So when we are doing that we are trying to uh, do a lot of other uh, actions which, which is going to help us in correlation. So we are collecting all the data which we, are, we feel which is required and then aggregating it and then we are trying to integrate it into putting it in the same index and then we are trying to analyze what all we need and then we are planning to get an actionable insight out of that. Uh, so here the lines where we uh, marked in yellow are something which application teams or the product teams will own and it's into their own uh, in a box where that's being controlled by them and as an observability team and uh, a cable admin we would be the ones who would be making changes to the data right from our side so this is a visual representation of what a unified system behavior is going to be looking like so let's get into the specifics of the solution which we are proposing here and the first stage is collect so uh, it, at this stage we are uh, collecting the, the useful and uh, the desired data which we want uh, from the hotel sources to uh, our uh, observe logging platform that is Splunk so we are using your Kribble Steam and we have uh, enabled our Kribble uh, source uh, hotel source over here and then we have a uh, uh, our hotel collectors which has an export option um, and we mentioned the Kribble's endpoint so that uh, the collectors can uh, successfully send the data to our hotel source in Kribble stream and Kribble stream is going to get uh, receive the data as it is over here and uh, the, the first step of collecting variable data is done with this step and then the next one would be to uh, reduce so uh, as such when you see the hotel tracing has uh, various uh, ways of uh, collecting traces so that might be in a batch or it might be in a, uh, a combined mode so we, we we might get a json which is having almost 100 items in a one particular span which is being com combined into all these batches and being sent across and not uh, based on manual or the auto automation uh, auto instrumentation sorry so uh, uh, this is something which we need to uh, handle it at our side we do not want to have uh, the entire the uh, the information from this is to be logged in Splunk where uh, we need to identify what what's going to be our rel uh, relevant uh, data here so that's how we try to reduce the noise and have something worked out for each service system so this is something which can be done uh, custom to each and every uh, uh, services uh, on an individual basis this is not something which uh, uh, sin you need not push it on across all the services because the needs and requirements for each services troubleshooting might vary so that's when Kribble stream comes into picture with the filter feature where we can filter uh, the data, how we pass and how we reduce it based on the data. So we have uh, identified here the spans as 100 items which we do not want and attributes is common but then you have almost 15 items of uh, uh, spans within uh, e e each uh, JSON over here. So that's going to be a problem. So we need to try to reduce the noise here and the, this is how we are going to do it so then third stage is something where we are shaping the data so here we are trying to convert the huge json into a, a valuable one one event where we have the desired fields what we feel might be useful for our troubleshooting purpose and also shaping the data in a format where it's more readable and it's being recognized by our logging platform 
and along with this when we are trying to add this we are trying to also enrich the data so here if you see there is uh, three fields of uh, uh, primarily used in Splunk index source and source type so these three fields are something where we have we map each services uh, uh, indexes as it is where the logs are being residing so that we have uh, all the traces and logs in the same place and the next one is uh, going to show how, okay, how we are going to do it so uh, we need to shed the dead weight right so we don't want all the data to uh, splunk and we start with a uh, basic control on our instrumentation library spans and then uh, the library spans is being in a nested uh, json again with another span so we have to unroll all this data and then we do a set of functions which is going to get to a basic level of how we want the data to be uh, as shown in the previous slide so we do passes we do eval we try to set the timestamp and then we try to rename certain fields based on our needs and uh, all other action items are being done so other span attributes fields are being dropped as well so there are a lot of functions which we do with cribble which is going to enable us uh, uh, shed that, that weight here and uh, which is going to make your logs look in, into a simpler aspect uh, just as here so this is going to be a final output so now your total uh, total log data is now completed so now we need to have this trace metadata in our logs so that's where we start working on uh, injection of trace metadata into our logs so this code is in a basic snippet of how we can add the context from our application layer itself so uh, this is where we use uh, a key uh, we where we use uh, hotel trace id and hotel span id as a unique attribute to inject into the logs so we get the context from the lambda which is instrumenting it in water and inject it into the logs and send this across uh, to our logging platform so that's the idea of this injection so our correlation begins right away here so we have uh, we have now successfully routed our traces to index and uh, source type which is being the same location of the logs for that particular service and now our logs are also having the information of trace metadata that is trace ids and span ids this is really going to help us with the these two are the main attributes which is going to help us within correlating bridging between our traces and our logs so how this is going to help us this is going to connect your dots between various uh, specific speci operation and then what's really happening at in your system and also from any single point of failure it's going to help us to traverse back and forth from both sides so that we know where exactly the issue lies or where exactly the uh, problem is sitting at so yeah and uh, i think i can quickly show a demo for the same uh, where we have integrated this and we have built the data out of this and how does the final uh, dashboard in splunk would look like so yeah th uh, this is our unified dashboard which we have built by uh, integrating traces and uh, logs so uh, uh, first off we have uh, two pa pa two input panels where we want to uh, have a service name and trace id listed out here so if uh, if any end user or anybody who who has an issue with a particular service can query for that particular service over here by mentioning the name and as well as the trace id and this is a time frame for which they want to search it and then a submit button to run the searches so for example uh, since we have brought our trace information to splunk the uh, uh, first few panels are something which is going to uh, give you a uh, deep insight of what's really happening within your service so for example we have a business use case of an uh, application where uh, we have customer facing and uh, the wallet uh, of all our customers are being managed by this particular application so uh, we have people uh, adding uh, money to the wallet and purchasing and an e-commerce website and checking out so that's the use case over here so if you see here the we have around nine um, uh, sub services within this applications being uh, uh, instrumented to uh, trace and as well as there are around 110 sub uh, uh, methods and the modules which are being used over here and this is the unique trace ids which are being uh, traces created over the last seven days period of time so in any with any traces you want to ca calculate your red matrix and have an, uh, a trend line over that so this is something which uh, uh, we have built it in-house in evidence plunk using the data which we have collected from our hotel using kribble stream so 
uh, the, the quest of the mentioned over here that's a total count and then this part line is going to give you the timeline where when you can see a small spike and the trends over the last seven days so at the same time this is going to be your weight this is going to be your other span other trace ids and these are all going to be the durations of each trace across the uh, services over here so source field is corresponding to the service name in the tracing context so uh, any source uh, here these are all the service names uh, will listed in the tracing context as mentioned here so this is one a panel which is going to give you deep insights of what's really happening and uh, you can sort it by uh, either and then see which service is having a lot of errors so wallet's uh, wallet allowance service has a lot of errors which is being uh, there and we have a small spike over here and uh, the next panel is something where we want to also uh, have a overall view of the service latency matrix with respect to the durations and how the trend has been and which services are taking more time and this is uh, the durations in milliseconds which is ca calculated from the uh, uh, tracing context and uh, the next panel is going to give us a service mapping so for example uh, we have a unique trace ID and we are not sure what all services and what all uh, methods it's going to touch when it's uh, being processed by an, an the application, right? So we need to have the mapping between one on one. And uh, here we we are trying to uh, copy. Uh, so this trace ID is something which is going to be unique for the net, uh, complete request for the customer. So let's say if uh, we have a user with uh, uh, this particular trace ID and uh, is reporting a problem. The the person or the anyone who's attending on on call for the support for this particular applications can copy the trace ID and uh, place it away, then click submit, and then we will have all these panels which are all determined by trace ID to be running in uh, the running the searches. So let's give it a moment. And yeah, so here we have so this particular customer has done. Uh, as customers request has it two services over here which is depicted by source and there are four uh, there are four dependencies by dependencies I mean it has it uh, for the uh, my, my sub modules and those modules are all being represented by uh, here in the next panel where we have find allowance IDs query and is well mentioned over here and then uh, uh, all these four calls so this is the mapping which we are trying to say so find allowance id has been part of allowance uh, service have we have made two calls which is being captured by the traces so it can uh, so the information on the status and how what the call has been done can be seen in depth with, by tracing with respect to that so this is an overall view of mapping and then with respect to this particular request we have uh, uh, also created a panel to have uh, how much time uh, the latencies for each of this uh, module takes in uh, these services so we have calculated the average and then the p90 and min and max and compared with the rest of the services it's sitting on the its way out so this this pan these two panels are going to give you an uh, overview of what all services this particular request has it so the end user or the uh, person who is going to help in troubleshooting this is very well aware about where the service has it and what all uh, uh, modules it that has traversed to so that uh, when it being processed so that we at least have the dots being now connected with, with respect to what uh, areas we need to look for any troubleshooting and uh, the next panel is where we are trying to correlate trace and log here so once we have pasted uh, and hit a search here so the first four uh, source trace id ttms kind and name so these are all the uh, and the span id so these six fields are something which is going which is being retrieved from the trace and then we have message method and exception type which is something which is being extracted from our logging so th uh, this panel comprises of uh, uh, both the data which is being uh, uh, joined together in form of table and uh, explaining us what really happens here so here it says uh, we have uh, uh, a message says none of the team ids written by lf is present in allowance db so a user has tried a request where it is queried uh, in a db and then for that particular user uh, there is no allowance uh, being uh, present in the db so that has returned as an uh, exception which has said allowance not found exception so at the trace level you might see this request would have failed but then 
the reason it has failed or the point why it has failed might not be clear to any uh, end user or any support person so that's where the message and the logging context really helps here and the exception type so that's going to give us a further insight of what's really happening over here and then you have the kind and code which is going to be your standard otlp's uh, naming conventions where you can find and uh, take track of it and with respect to this uh, the next panel so is going to be giving you an insight into the number of exceptions which this uh, particular request has faced on its way uh, through through the traversing through the applications and then uh, by sorting this we can identify the query relevant services has taken 170 174 milliseconds overall in this uh, uh, the request so and the rest of the services have been done so any uh, any abnormalities which we see over the service can be spotted out in this and then the corresponding team can be notified uh, hey asking hey query service teams we can see most of our requests are taking a lot of time in your site so can we have a look at uh, the performance of your endpoints or, so this is how uh, this could be a data point which is going to start uh, conversations with the corresponding team and um, these are all your uh, exception duration so how how much uh, it's going to say like the uh, track your exceptions versus time so that uh, you know what's the rate of uh, the exceptions over the speed over the span of time so is it something which is happening always or not so that is going to give you an, uh, a complete understanding over here and uh, this is something which is done in the form of table format so you want to know what all uh, this is not with respect to this particular request but then this is going to give you what all uh, methods the particular service has and then uh, uh, what are the corresponding methods which has been done by here so if you can see here we have health check api which is done by all the other services as part of the standard procedure and at the same time uh, wallet allowed services has various calls which is being made in the db to find out whether the uh, allowance id is valid or not so this is going to give you one service into method mapping and method into service mapping which is uh, deep insight into on how applications interact mm, then we have a small representation for the particular the uh, trace id which we have given so the wallet services has uh, been split up into the four uh, modules where we are uh, checking for find allowance db find and two db queries and here and then the wallet query service is going to hit two api endpoints over here so this dashboard is going to give you an, a deep insight of an uh, uh, end users request over here and let me try to check with an, another request since this is uh, one of the trace ids over here let me gather it mm, let's give it a moment till it queries So yeah, again here we have all events metering and transaction service over here. So this is all with respect to the applications context. And then here, as mentioned, the first six panels is going to be something which is derived from trace. And then the message here says transactions either TFLEX or EDU or hence since not publishing it. So this is a message which is relevant to an application team. And when they see uh, this particular message, they knew what's the bag. A, a person with an application knowledge might know what, what's really causing this and can point it to the corresponding team. So uh, that's the whole purpose of uh, trace and log correlation. Talking about the challenges, yeah, we we have uh, we, we have lot lot of services which are working in silos. So this was uh, quite uh, uh, quite a challenge to integrate them with the Splunk. Uh, but uh, with respect to the uh, routing part, I think uh, Kribble's team really played in a crucial role here to uh, have have it uh, integrated with the Splunk uh, that particular index and. Uh, really the results we we seen with this was we were able to uh, resolve issues in um, uh, at least uh, in a quicker turnaround time than the earlier without uh, this particular dashboard and it increased the system reliability for this so yeah to and talking about the lessons learned and the best practices with this uh, uh, particular solution i think uh, one of the best practices which we have all was to leverage scribble for routing uh, any any kind of data which we have from various data sources i think uh, we, we, that's uh, really helping us as a game changer to uh, pass and enrich the data with what we need and uh, shed that, that weight and uh, the the thing which we so the current set of pipeline functions which we have created to uh, pass of data can be something which can be used as a framework for 
uh the entire tracing uh, uh, uh community as in it is the tracing format is something which is universal across uh, uh, for the particular domain and it's going to be same so no matter uh, who uses it is going to be same so that can be looked into a, a possibility of being added in as a credible pack which is really going to be in a uh, value for the teams who are going to use it uh, to understand and draw insights from the traces uh, they generate and uh, and that's the one of the best practices which we also recommend people to do is uh, pass an index data uh, along the way when you're trying to stream it to any logging solution and uh, some of the visualization be best practices is uh, try to have a, a custom dashboard created with uh, uh, more insights of uh, where you have all the data into a same index and uh, create uh, various uh, uh, visual representations to depict what, what's really going through the, your system and your services and uh, when uh, this is going to really be useful in your real-time monitoring and, and with this data and you can set up a lot of alerts uh, to uh, based on your threshold which you feel is required for each services on, on a custom basis and also understand the trends of the others exceptions and uh, uh, if any particular sub service is having consuming more time than what it's supposed to be and all this is going to create a lot of uh, uh, uh insights into uh, and alerting uh, opportunities for any observability team in and in the industry and uh, the by pulling all this data into a single data source we can we are trying to combine uh, logs and traces together and metrics is not so far away with this traces we can uh, have a lot of uh, insights there from these traces and we have an cripple pack which is exactly doing that uh, where we have uh, Trace to matrix conversions, which is currently in our uh, cable pack repository, which is going to convert most of our uh, uh, traces into matrix and uh, going to send it to, to uh, any logging platforms that and you can build any alerts or dashboards out of it to track uh, how it's going to uh, be how your applications are going to behave. And uh, th and one main thing also, this is going to also create a lot of uh, collaborative. Uh, 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 initiative across the teams within the organizations so uh, uh, let's say a team which is going to take in your l1 uh, l1 calls of uh, first level of the support might have a lot of information on where the uh, issue is really happening and route it directly to uh, l2 or the l3 team without having an help of another intermediate support person in this so the person uh, as a first line responder has been equipped with a good knowledge uh, to handle this with the unique dashboards which you create and uh, integrated ones models which I, we have just showcased so this is going to be really a game changer for people who use it uh, accordingly and uh, trigger alerts based on predefined threshold this is something which we have uh, we want uh, teams to have uh, set it up as part of their onboarding process itself and not just uh, bring the data in but have uh, create on uh, dashboarding and alerting while you onboard the data itself. Yeah, with this, I conclude my presentations and thank you, guys.